The undisputed need for sustaining the environment has been a constant issue for a multitude of parties, especially the oil and gas industry. With problems occurring at unforeseen times, such as the Deepwater Horizon spill, a three-month-long spill that released 210 million gallons of crude oil into the ocean, contaminated 1,100 miles of coastline, and cost $40 billion, $40 billion in fines, it is vital for permanent, if not temporary, solutions to be present. Today, I would like to talk to you about my research project, which I began to pursue in high school. After moving to Houston, Texas from Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia in 2008, I became very engaged in the science fair program. It allowed me to develop my ideas and learn about topics that I felt very passionate about. I began to pursue research related to cleaning up oil spills, and it ultimately led me to be inspired, or it inspired me from the Deepwater Horizon spill. Living 30 minutes away from the Gulf of Mexico, this was a spill that most definitely left, left an impact, and I wanted to help contribute to it in some way. And so one of the methods that BP used was called the coffer dam. This idea has since then been abandoned, but the idea was to have this device sit over the spill and collect the three phases of the water, oil, and gas as one phase, and then transport it up through an outlet valve to a surface vessel where it would then be incinerated. There were a couple problems with this design, some of which include the dimensions of the device not being large enough to contain the spill, as well as a lack of heating components that ultimately ended up with the phases turning into ice and choking the device. The most important factor, however, was time, especially because there was a lot of pressure from governmental agencies as well as the general public. And so the approach BP took was to find a permanent solution immediately. Whereas the approach I wanted to take was to find a temporary solution that would then allow for a more permanent solution to be implemented at a later time. And I ultimately came up with this, my version of the coffer dam. This patent pending device is 75 feet in height and has a 42 foot diameter. It's made out of carbon steel material and it contains pressure, density, and temperature sensors located all throughout to monitor the interface. The main purpose of this device that makes it novel as well as sustainable is its ability to separate the three phases of the water, oil, and gas at the source of the spill, so two miles below the surface. This is done in order to allow the phases to be recycled rather than burnt. And how it works is, it sits on top of the spill and the phases enter. There are three main components within the device that allow it to function properly. The first is the sensors, as I mentioned earlier. The second is the heating component that prevents the phases from freezing. And then finally, the flow path, which is all based off of density and controlled by baffle chamber wrapped. And so as the phases enter, they enter the baffle chamber and immediately, like I said, based off of densities, the water will sink to the bottom, the oil gets the second tier, and then the gas gets the third tier. By the time the phases exit the device, they're at 100% water, 100% oil, and 100% gas. That way it can then be recycled. The software that I used was called Stoner Pipeline Simulator, and this was a software that I learned from scratch throughout this experiment. While running the simulation, one of the main goals was to make sure that the device was universal. Universal in the sense that it could be implemented in any situation, regardless of the severity of the conditions. As well as I made sure that I tested the entire spectrum from the collection of the phases to the separation and ultimately to the transportation. Overall, this device was able to withstand a variety of tests being implemented. The next step is to now look at an alternative software called Olga that I actually had the opportunity to learn through an internship this past summer with BHP Billiton. Likewise, I'm being connected to an ocean consortium by um, a BP employee, as well as I've had the opportunity to present to oil executives such as Rex Tillerson, the CEO of ExxonMobil. Once I, get, once I obtain access to Olga, my goal is to further validate the results and reduce some of the assumptions that I had to make on the previous software called Stoner Pipeline Simulator in order to continue looking at in a way of continue looking to partner with oil and gas companies as well as eventually commercialize and make the device be a reality. Because an idea like this could be very important. As our society's technological capabilities increase as the potential for human error, currently there are already plans um, set to increase subsea crude oil extraction over the next 10 to 20 years in regions such as the North Sea, the Red Sea, or offshore Brazil. And it's better to be safe than sorry because ultimately it's not a matter of if an oil spill can occur, but a matter of why. Thank you.